What up folks? In this video I talked to my buddy Thomas Kelton. We covered topics like how he got into triathlons, what he's doing now for training, his new coaching business merge multi-sport, and a bunch of other topics. So take a listen, let me know what you think. Hit the like button, subscribe, I don't care. Leave a comment, tell me I'm stupid, whatever. Enjoy the video. Thomas! <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> Not much. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> good, good. Hey, it's Friday, man. We're supposed to, you know, under normal circumstances, I'd be, like, traveling somewhere, going, you know, doing something for the weekend because it's a three-day weekend, but sheltering in place, man. Sheltering uh, in place. I appreciate that. I think I'm actually at the point right now where I don't know what day it is, so. Uh. <laughs> well, it's Friday, and I'm off work, so that's the only thing I know. So, hey, everyone, I got Thomas Skelton here. Tommy Three Sticks is what some people call him. Right. He is right. a buddy of mine, and I don't know. Just want to talk to him about triathlon. Yeah, and man. He, just, he started this new, what do you call it? Company, business. Company, co coaching company. Yeah. Yeah, and he's a coach. Um, oh, um, and we paused. That, All right. Hold we on. The kitty cat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that um there you go some technical Sorry, difficulties <laughs> hey, uh, the cat just walked jumped up on the counter walked across the laptop and was bolted out just want to make yeah. sure to leave a mark <laughs> all right man let's find out who thomas skelton is oh so, man what's your background how'd you get in triathlon how long you been doing it so i think this is 10 or 11 years uh long long story short um i guess years ago was kind of uh out of shape overweight um and just kind of living living life normally um smoke ate drank a bunch and um my one of my cousins or my cousin's youngest son uh got diagnosed with um leukemia and decided to do a 10k kind of fun run in atlanta um in their neighborhood to kind of try and raise some money to help cover some of the you know kind of adding up hospital bills and so my wife girlfriend at the time was like yo we can we can do this right like i think um you know and so you know eventually we did that Ran that, lost a little bit of weight in the process, started getting a little bit healthier. Um, at some point was like, man, maybe I should bike a little bit too, you know, try and add something else in there. And a buddy talked me into going to the pool one day, um, trying to swim. And then, yeah, he was doing this local triathlon in Mount Pleasant and kind of talked me into doing it. And yeah, now here we are. What moment were you like, oh, triathlon, what is that? I barely remember what I ate for breakfast yesterday. That's a good question. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I'd seen some, you know, over the years, you see stuff on TV and whatnot, right? And um, he had done he had done a, a couple races. And I remember, like, when we went and rode bikes one time, like, he was, you know, just, like, kept having to wait on me, wait on me, wait on me. And then just kind of started talking to me about this this travel and stuff. And, um, you know, I was like, well, that looks, that looks interesting and completely different from, from what I've ever done. Um, and kind of like anything I do, if I do something, I kind of jump in head first and, you know, that's what I did. So, um, it was the East Cooper Coastal Triathlon. It was, uh, I want to say like a 750 meter open water swim. And I remember like, it was really choppy and windy and thinking I was going to throw up the whole time during the swim, scared to death, swimming in the ocean, not being able to see anything. Um, I think drank so much salt water that, uh, on the bike like i felt the whole time on the bike like i was gonna throw up and then on the run i was just like oh man just don't walk just don't walk so <laughs> i think it was, like a, it was like a 16 mile bike and a four mile run something like that so um uh, but yeah i was like after after that i was hooked like hook line and sinker i was done and so in what year was that 2009 i think it would be two yeah 2009 prior to that and i guess kind of at the time I grew up playing, um, playing golf, uh, kind of, I guess, competitive junior golf, thought I wanted to, to, to play golf professionally and realized I was, I was, even as I was, I was a decent golfer, I was never 
of that kind of a caliber. Um, but I always enjoyed kind of the, I took lessons always, always wanted to try and get better and realized kind of that I enjoyed the, the teaching aspect of golf. Um, and, you know, at some point determined that, that, that what I was going to do was going to, I was going to become a golf teacher. I was going to become a golf professional and teach. Um, and that's what I did um, for a while, for a long time, until uh, I met this girl that was a teacher and had a, uh, a teacher's schedule, right? Holidays and weekends off. And in the golf business, you don't have that kind of a schedule. And so um, I ended up getting out of the golf business and kind of, I guess as the time worked out, I was, as I was transitioning kind of out of the golf business, I kind of started doing this triathlon thing and um, kind of worked out pretty well. Now your signature color, but for a lot of people that don't know, is what color? Pink. Pink. You wear a pink? Speedo. Speedo. Yes. Why? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Okay, so, so where that all kind of came from, like I, I, in the past, years ago, earlier on in the sport, I was very serious, very regimented, very meticulous to, to a fault right um probably caused undue stress on my wife who uh thankfully dealt with me during that time and um you know realized that i love the sport and i wanted to keep doing it but i wanted to have fun with it right and i didn't want to take myself so seriously um and as much as i do enjoy seriously training and competing right like this is a hobby this is fun this is this is something that i get to do and that's that was just kind of a way for me to remind myself like constantly like dude this is just this is just for fun like don't take yourself seriously like people take can take this sport so seriously and that's not necessarily a bad thing until it comes you know to to a point to where it negatively impacts other other aspects of their life right and so that was just kind of like we're gonna have fun you know we're gonna make this fun we're gonna be silly we're gonna goof off we're going to enjoy life and triathlon. It's going to be a huge part of that, but it is that it is just part of life. It's not all of life. People who don't know you. Yeah. I mean, do they come up to you and say, why are you wearing a pink Speedo? No, they tend to kind of keep their distance. <laughs> <laughs> Random. Well, it just depends. Like then there's been like a couple of times, like a little like local time trial that we have here. Well, hopefully we'll end up having it. Um, they do like a series of them like once a month or there's like four of them over the over the summer the the first one i went to there were some people that i kind of knew didn't really know and like we're like hey let's take a picture and i'm like oh, i'm just gonna stand and take a picture in a pink speedo and an arrow helmet and i did wear a uh, a chest strap heart rate monitor for fun right to complete the look i wish i'd had um some big compression socks i should have worn that in hindsight but again it was just you know that was just kind of being silly my heart rate monitor battery was dead it didn't even actually work but it was just for fun right and, you know, I realized like it kind of, it's, it was, it's a little bit of a distraction, but like it, it kind of provided some levity, just help people to just kind of relax and something to laugh about and be stupid with. What Thomas is not mentioning here is that he actually won that category to beat like professional triathlete in the time trial. By like right? two, two or three seconds. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, he likes to have fun, fun with it, but yeah. 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 It was a, that first one though, it was, I remember it was a, it was, really windy and i had a very deep front wheel on and was like man if i am out here and i go down with the crosswinds in a speedo this is not gonna be pretty <laughs> <laughs> how embarrassing would that be right i felt uh so bad too um steve baker with the the greenville spinners here so they try and do it as much of like a time trial start as they can and so you can mount your bike and someone will sit there and hold the seat post right to kind of keep you upright and so i'm st sitting there on my bike clipped in in a speedo and he's got his hands like a quarterback <laughs> <laughs> hold my bike steady there's a there's a good picture of that so so the beard yeah faster or slower sexier no um <laughs> I, you know it's uh i think it, it actually can get to a point where it gets long enough we're in the water where i feel like my time sit down like a second or two per um per hundred but it's not i don't i don't notice anything it's certainly faster getting ready for work in the morning right or going going out or something like you just got to trim up this trim up this and next thing you know like 
fresh and clean looking. I don't have to, you know, get the razor out and you already got enough stuff to shave as a triathlete, right? So going into triathlon, yeah. you, your, your background was golfing, right? Yep. But a lot of people who do not have a background, myself included, are not very good swimmers, right? You is called adult onset swimming. Do you think learn, knowing how to play golf helped you become a better swimmer? Because you're a really good swimmer. You're one of the better, like, I mean, I wouldn't say you're going to swim in the Olympics next year or whenever, but I would say you're always kind of one of the first people out of the swim. How did you get better at swimming? I think, you know, I've always had, with, with golf, there was always a skill and technique kind of, focus and, and mindset. And I definitely think that just kind of naturally transitioned over to swimming. Um, I think if, if people would spend more time learning about proper mechanics, trying to kind of implement some of those and just having a better education on what a good swim stroke kind of contains, what are the good aspects of a good, of a, of a swim stroke, um, it would it would benefit them significantly. And I think just over the years of constantly like watching YouTube videos, reading, learning, trying to get an understanding because I enjoyed that aspect of it and trying to kind of implement that in myself, it just kind of helped me develop a little bit or develop as a swimmer. Yeah, I've got to do more of that because this left arm does not want to cooperate. It's like, it's, it's, it's my swim technique is all motor. I do uh, watch a lot of YouTube videos. I do practice with a swim coach. I do get a lot of hands-on training, but for some reason, this left arm, it just got a mind of its own, you know? So just gotta hats off it. to you, man. Just got to slow it down and give it a, give it a chance, you know? I think yeah. that's the thing is you've got to separate, like, conditioning and skills work, right? So, like, uh, if, you, if, you're, if, you're, if you've got a swim, you've got some conditioning focus in it, but, you know, early on after you warm up, you take some time and do some skills work, you know, and some drills at the beginning. Um, you, can't, you can't do those with a focus of a specific pace or, or you know, interval that you've got to do them on. Like, you've really got to commit during that time. Now's the time to focus on the skill, get the technique down, and then try and hold it, hold that technique during the kind of more conditioning piece of the workout. So right now with the lockout, how are you staying motivated in your training? Obviously, it looks like you're still training or you're still working out, you know, probably for peace of mind or whatnot. But what keeps you motivated right now with nothing on the horizon? You know, that's that get that's kind of a that's kind of deep that gets into goals and and, you know, what are you trying to do? What's your focus? But I think you know, races on the horizon are, are nice to have. And it's always, it's neat to have that carrot at the end of the stick, right? Just dangling in front of you. But if at the end of the day, if you don't enjoy the process of just trying to get better, if you don't enjoy the process of training for the sake of developing athletically as a whole, you know, not having a race on the horizon can be really tough. To be honest, I'm getting to train more now than I normally would. And, and I am, and I'm, I'm, you know, ecstatic about that. I'm getting to bike more, partially as the weather's getting better, but more time on the train or two, not necessarily outside, just because I have a little more available time at the moment. But I think it's, sorry, long answer. It's just, it's just a focus and enjoyment on, on the process. If you focus on the process and you do things well, the goals will come. But if you focus on the goals all the time, when there's not a, a you know, on a, if, on a, if it's a certain time or, or, you know, a PR or whatever, if you don't have something like that on the horizon, it's very difficult to stay motivated. You know, you see the people that sign up for a race, do the race, get down. Then they sign up for another race. They get up, they get excited to train. They finish that race, they get down. And I've never, I've never really been that way. I've just kind of been steady, enjoy the process. And yeah. so that gets back into how do you balance, you know, yeah. whether you're doing triathlons or, or family or your cat or your mm -hmm. in work and, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> How many cats do you have? Uh, um, we have two dogs and two cats. Okay. Well, I guess the dogs offset the cats because like, yeah. if you get two cats and no dogs, then you're Yeah. We've, cat got, two, uh, we've got two um, big greyhounds and then a cat my wife found on the road that stayed with us and then another cat that we got, which um, I love. <laughs> I'll admit that. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <Come at me. laughs> so, so you're training right now? Yeah. 
What's it look like? I would say, you know, pretty much biking every day. You know, I'm not doing anything overly long, like three hours on, on a Saturday, on Saturday. Um, if I feel motivated, maybe I'll ride a little bit longer than that, but just kind of taking the opportunity to get a little bit more volume on my legs, some good uh, kind of build a little more of an aerobic foundation, a little bit of intensity, but just, yeah, riding, riding a bunch. Are, are you able to ride at, ride outside? Yeah. Uh, yes. I think that's a, that's a, would be a fair answer. I mean, the roads I have to ride on right now are a little bit different than maybe exactly what I normally would. A lot of times from here, I'll use our, uh, the Swamp Rabbit Trail to get out of town. Um, just cause it's kind of an easy way. There's no cars, but they've got it closed off right now. Um, because everybody's supposed to stay six feet apart, but people would get out there and the trail is getting more packed than normally would be. So, um, but there's plenty of good roads to get out. I mean, honestly, we're pretty fortunate where we are in, um, in Greenville for, for riding decent roads for South Carolina, good Hills. So, and the weather's kind of gotten nice finally. So, um, it's pretty easy to get outside. Once we get out of this quarantine, man, I'm going to have to come up there and ride, uh, that Caesar's head with you again. We won't take that route we did through, uh, through part of North Carolina on a, what was it? Crab Creek road. I think that was, uh, yeah. was not good. You got yeah. good. <laughs> I was probably about 20 pounds heavier that day. We went up that mountain. Yeah, I'm going to need you to get some cookies in you before <laughs> you come. <laughs> if you can get back to that place, I would appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was fun. That was a great time. I, I won't lie to you, but yeah. My my twelve mile run the following day definitely definitely suffered from that. That was a dude, that was a solid ride. That was a really good ride. Yeah, and and I'm drawing a blank. Who who's the guy we rode with? Uh, Jonathan Lejeune. John. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, He's a, he's a solid rider too. Dude, yeah, he he can he can he can ride and run real well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Does your wife do triathlons? No, she is. She does not. She likes workouts that are like 40 to 60 minutes at the most. Like she definitely enjoys kind of like group stuff with a, with a little more kind of a strength conditioning component to it too. Whereas like, I'll go, you know, I'm happy to go ride my bike for three, four hours by myself. But, um, so yeah, no. Yeah. She's got so, uh, some spinning. So maybe she's done, a, she's, she's doing some, some like cycle bar spin class type stuff. So you never know, man. You never know. I might be able to snake her into it. She's laughing in the background. I think that's a no. <laughs> hey, my wife went to one triathlon. She's like, if it was in a pool, I could do it. I found one in the pool, and she did it. <laughs> I don't. I don't think. No, that's a negative. <laughs> she. She's like, hey, can we go to cool? If we go to cool places, like, I'll come and support you. <laughs> No, she uh, she is super supportive, but the triathlon is definitely not for her. So before the before the quarantine shelter in place, yeah. I know I knew South Carolina was like the last state. What did y'all what did y'all shelter in place like twenty minutes ago? Seventeen. <laughs> Were you signed up for any races? I was signed up to do a race in Claremont in Florida, Olympic down there. They got canceled, um, and honestly, I got the flu in February. Or I think it was the flu and just did it, it kicked my butt and i was like you know it's i don't need to drive 16 hours round trip on the weekend so i decided already not to go down to that race and then it got canceled and i hadn't signed up for any other races because i just was trying to figure out I, I, you know what my season had in store um and so honestly it turned out to be kind of super fortunate what was your last race the um tough man sc in october the it was in, in Greenwood, South Carolina, did the Olympic distance. So I think this year now it's going to be that's that was the last year of being a tough man branded race. So I think this year it's just the, the um, South Carolina half, but there's also an Olympic distance race with it. So let's get back to this fun aspect. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the whole story, but it has something to do with you getting kicked out of a Facebook page. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Tell yeah. me how you came up with this. I would say band of misfits called the yeah that's fit uh, Facebook page. Well, now what is this? So I, I you know I I can't even take credit for officially starting it. Basically, I guess it was just the the Iron Man Chattanooga group goofing off, having fun. You know, one of my buddies would would post a video like he um 
posted a video in a Speedo saying, hey, I just got back from swimming and now I'm out here chopping wood in his boots and Speedo with an ax. Does this count as a brick workout? And then, <laughs> right, oh, it's amazing. And, um, and it was like the, the camera, like the video starts down at his feet in the boots and like pans up. And all of a sudden it's like, there's a Speedo and no other clothes. And he's standing there with an ax over his shoulder. Um, and, and like, I'm like, as a joke, like answering it, like sitting on the toilet, right? Like just, just trying to have fun. Cause again, you know, people can take some stuff very seriously and not everybody's going to, going to like that or appreciate that. And I respect that. So, uh, somebody else actually started this, this other page, like made me and another buddy or two an admin. Um, and we're like, oh, I don't know, whatever. And then we kind of officially got kicked out of that page and this uh this other page just started kind of growing um yeah i mean it's uh i don't think there's probably anybody in there that takes themselves seriously at all um it's uh it's just a funny it's just a good group of people i mean people you go ride bikes with and go drink a beer with after and talk talk smack with and um yeah i mean it's just like it, it it's just kind of like your buddies next door yeah i want to say thanks for inviting me man because it's probably the best, you know, triathlon community uh, page that I'm on right now because, you know, to to your point, I mean, people are just joking around with each other. No, there's no feelings hurt. You know, I say stuff about you and you say stuff about me and just goes back and forth. And it, it's a good group of guys or, and yeah. girls. Too. And I think, you know, if you go on to any, any race, event page you know you see kind of the same questions though what's the water temperature is it going to be wetsuit legal you know what's the weather on the right day going to be like and it's it's really it's just i think you see people stressing about all of these variables that they have absolutely no control over like they, you certainly need to think about some of these things and be prepared for them but being stressed about them doesn't do any good right and so i think it was you know after you see you know uh, what's the water temperature post like for the 50,000th time, right? It's kind of like, okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, you either have a wetsuit or you don't. You do the swim training or you don't. Like, you prepare for warm water, you prepare for cold water, like, based on what probably will happen, but there's certain things on the day that you just can't control and stressing and, and being wound up over that, it just, it's not worth it. So let's talk about your shirt for a moment. Yeah, man. What is Merge Multisport? So Merge, uh, Merge Multisport is my coaching business. That's me. Um, the the name kind of came from the concept of what what I feel like coaching and training should be in the first place. Um, it's just here's your life, here's your training, and you've got to appropriately merge the two together so that training fits in with your life, not your life having to fit in and around training if that makes sense can certainly go down a rabbit hole with that but that's really where it came from that's really what triathlon is i mean 99.9 .9 of us are not or ever will be professional triathletes and, and a lot of people lose inside of that i know i do sometimes because i'm like i've got to go for a five-hour bike ride today and i've got to get this running tomorrow and i've got to do the swim and then this next thing it's like i realize i'm spending time with the family today or this weekend so yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I can appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, a perfect example would be I would, you know, traditionally, you know, a couple of years ago, get up early on a Saturday, go ride for five hours, like hitting the ground. I was like, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be rolling by 6 a.m., right? I'll be done riding at 11. We'll run for a little bit by home by 1230. We'll have a late lunch. I can kind of cut the grass, have dinner with, you know, lunch and dinner and spend some time in the afternoon with my wife. And I'm like, I'm killing this husband thing, right? And then, you know, next thing you knew, it'd be like eight o'clock. I'm exhausted, 8.30. I'm like falling asleep on the sofa. Meanwhile, she's, you know, occasionally like, hey, it'd be, it'd be fun to go out and have dinner or go out and have a, a drink with some friends. And I was, would always be like, oh, I'm just so tired. I'm just, you know, I don't, uh, but I thought I was doing it right by getting up and knocking it out. Whereas, you know, on the flip side, by taking the time to say, hey, what would work for you? Because this is kind of something that, that you're part of. And then, you know, hey, sometimes it's nice to sleep in and have coffee and breakfast together and then go ride. And maybe she has lunch with some girlfriends and then, you know, or, or, or whatever it is. And then I'm back a little bit 
after lunch, but then I'm not exhausted and we can actually go out and have dinner and hang out with some friends and, and enjoy life a little bit. That's a really good point. I mean, you, you got me thinking here, like I do a lot of the, the what you said the first go around and I'm like, mm, that that does make sense. So maybe I'll start doing some of that. So is that how you kind of got into coaching? I mean, I know you have a, a, a golfing background, um, but is that what drew you into coaching because you could help people with that kind of conflict? Uh, no, I think that, I mean, that's definitely been kind of more of a, a recent thing, um, but I've, I've had an interest in coaching for a long time. Um, I enjoy training. I enjoy the process of training, kind of the, I guess the science and the art of, of, of training and why you're doing things and when you're doing things and how you're doing it and, and what's the desired outcome. That's stuff that I just enjoyed. And I, I enjoy helping other people and, and seeing them improve and, and watching them on their journey. And so the desire to coach has honestly been there for, for years. I never had the confidence in myself. You know, it was like I was waiting for somebody else to say, hey, you know what? You'd make a good coach and realize that if I want to do that, I've just got to, I got to think about it and, and decide, do I want to do this or not? Do I think I can do it or not? And uh, I just kind of eventually got a point where I, I had to kind of believe in myself that, that this is something that I can do and I can, I can help people and I can help people make this journey fun. And so, yeah, I just, it, it, it's been, it's been on the back burner in the back of my mind for a long time. Though. As someone who, who could be looking for a coach, um, why would they want Thomas Skelton to be their coach? I mean, that's a, that's a million dollar question, right? I mean, if you, if you look at it and think about it, I mean, there's, there's tons of really great coaches all across the country, all across the world that have a ton of experience, um, a lot of knowledge and a lot of skill. I think the, the, the biggest thing that, that I have is that over, you know, over the years I've worked with a number of different coaches and, and have seen a bunch of different coaching styles and how some things worked for me, some things didn't, some things worked for friends, some things didn't to kind of recognize the, the individual, uh, individuality of the sport and training and the way people respond to things. Um, I think that's definitely played, it plays a little bit into it, but I think the biggest thing is that I, I guess the journey that I've had to go on, I've experienced this sport from, from places that a lot of other good coaches haven't, you know, you have a lot of people that are naturally good athletes and, you know, got into, to this sport with another background and started coaching and they were already really good athletes and they don't know, they don't know what it's like to, you know, do a half Ironman in six and a half hours, right? They've never been there and they don't know what it was like to get to the point of doing it in, you know, four and a half hours. And so I've, I've experienced kind of every piece of, of this journey. And I think that that knowledge and that unique experience definitely helps me to be able to work with a variety of, of athletes. And what kind of advice do you have for people right now who's being quarantined? You know, they, they had a full season ahead of them. They were, they were signed up for 50,000 races, yep. you know, back to backs or whatever, you know, but they had a big A race and, Everything's getting canceled. What would you say to those people? It's tough, man, because, you know, a lot of these races, you know, many people are signing up for eight, nine months in advance and they've got, there's a, there's a lot of mental buildup. I mean, I have one of my athletes was, was doing Tulsa, right. And Tulsa, you know, kind of feels like for her that the rug got pulled out, you know, on the home stretch. Right. And that's, that's really tough. And I think, you know, the first piece of advice I would, I would give somebody would be like, it's, it's okay to be upset. It's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to kind of, I guess, pout for a little bit. And then eventually you got to get over it and you got to move on. But at, at the end of the day, if you focus on the process and you try and just enjoy the process of training, right? The process of, of exercising and trying to become a better athlete. Even if you were just going to be a one and done Ironman, if, hey, I'm going to do this Ironman. I want to do it. It's a bucket list thing. I want to. I want to check it off my, my list. There's still a process that you go through in, in kind of an, a, an athletic journey. And if you, if you aren't going to enjoy that, it's, it's not going to be any fun training for an Ironman anyway. And so kind of backing up and saying, okay, where am I? Where am I in, the, in my journey? Let me focus on me as an athlete and continue to develop as an athlete. And then when I get to the point that we get to race, we get to race. But until then, just focus on the process.
of being an athlete. Great advice. It's, really good. It's, really good advice. Yeah. It's tough, man. It is. It is. You don't have anything to train for, you know? So why do you get up in the morning and ride a bicycle? You know, you got to find out why you love something, right? That's, that's kind of how I look at it. But yeah, that's really good advice. So, all right, we're going to try this last segment, right? It's going to be called rapid fire. I'm going to throw a bunch of questions at you. You only got a few seconds to answer. Uh, and, and then we'll move on to the next one with the kitty cat. Get your wife in there too. She can she can answer some of them. No, that's a big that's a big no. She said. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's beans. All right, hey beans. Right, ready? Let's hit. Yes. This. Okay. Here it. we go. Rapid okay. fire. Favorite okay. race. Oh, challenge Aruba. Why? A, oh, I mean, you're. It was in Aruba. Nice. Like, it was it was it was unbelievable. We went down like two days before race, and then we stayed for a couple of days after. My wife, just my wife and I, and had an absolute blast. That nice. race isn't around anymore, I don't believe, unfortunately. Favorite training route? Oh man, um, the ride we uh, the ride we did when you were here. I love that ride. Um, it's 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 frustrating that it's gotten a little bit sketchier um, on that road over the last couple of years in North Carolina, but. Um, Man, anything anything in and up and north of Hotel Del Mystique is just just awesome roads to get a bike on. Yeah, fastest five k. I'm not very like nineteen twenty six or something. I think. What when? Oh, I think that was the the Turkey Trot or Turkey Day five k this year. Do yeah. another one. I want to see eighteen fifty nine. Yeah, done. You got it. Done for you. Best race as far as finish. Yeah. Uh, so Lake Logan sprint last year. I, I won the sprint. Um, but the, I mean, you know, the, Olymp the Olympics the same day, right? So take that for what you will, right? There's there's a lot of good people racing the Olympic. Um, but I ended up winning the sprint. Uh, nice. Day. Hey, you only race against those the people who show up. Show up. That's right. That's right. Favorite adult beverage. Oh, it depends. Um. I mean, I like beer. I like wine. I like tequila. I would say right now, uh, uh, screwball, peanut butter whiskey. Peanut Favorite butter whiskey. brewery in Greenville? Oh, definitely. Like these guys right here, they're like a mile from our house. Love supporting them. Their beer is really good. They got a good variety of beer. Um, it's, it's, they're, it's solid beer, definitely. Heavier light beer? both I, I like ipas um i like a good stout or a porter um i don't really like i just don't really like any sours that's about it i don't think many people do yeah only only people with like bitter hearts <laughs> <laughs> short arms <laughs> <laughs> what's your handicap oh now shoot man uh 10 maybe 10 12 i go out play like once a year in like a scramble and I hit some good shots. I'm like, man, maybe I should try and do this some more. But um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I would say, I, I would say somewhere maybe around a 10 or 12 would be what I would expect to be at this point. Could you, could you turn me into a scratch golfer? No. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. I've seen you swim. <laughs> It's not pretty. <laughs> well, the person swimming is pretty. I'll give yeah. you that. Yeah. <laughs> all right, man. That's all I got. Hey, man. I appreciate it. it Thomas, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Trying this new thing out where I, from a quarantine perspective, hang out with friends and ask them crazy questions about triathlons and what they're doing right now. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for joining me. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Sounds good, but I appreciate it, man. It was good seeing you. All right. Bye.